here in the waveform, the analog signal has been sampled at a different timing. The places it has been sampled are the sampling points. And the data which has been captured means converted from analog to digital or the sampled data. And how many times it's been sampled is the samples per second. So these are the important thing to convert back from the digital to analog, these informations are required. So here it is single channel, the same thing for can be a two channel, we call it stereo and more than two channel, 5.1 channel or 7.1 channel keeps going. But the concept is same. Let's move on to the audio subsystem in an SOC. The audio subsystem comprises of following blocks, I2S interface, audio subsystem clock, DMA, I2C and codec. Here we see the typical audio block in an SOC. Here in the SOC, it's nothing but application processor. This is for mobile SOC I'm talking about. So here we have an I2S controller, which receives the data from the memory to DMA. And this I2S controller gives the data through I2S interface to the mixer. The mixer again transfers the data to the audio codec again through the I2S interface. There is an I2C controller which is required to control the audio codec through I2C bus. We will see each and every item in detail in the coming slides. I2S uses three different types of data formats. Any one of the format will be used between master and slave. It should, one, the master and slave must use the same data format when it is transmitting through I2S. So here we have three different types of formats. One is I2S format, left justified format, and right justified format. In the left justified format, LR clock, when it is low, whatever the data in, is considered as a left channel data. Whatever the data, when it is in the right side, is called right channel data. In left justified format, the data, when the left channel LR clock is high, is considered as a left channel data. And when LR clock is low, it's called right channel data. And also the data will start immediately after when the LR clock goes from low to high. In the right justified format, the last bit will end along with the left channel data when it from high to low. So this is the difference in I2S data formats. Clock. Clock is very important block for audio because the, what are the clock is being configured based on that all other clocks like bit clock, LR clock are derived. So the LR clock is nothing but the frequency of LR clock is nothing but the sampling rate. So if the data is sampled at 48 kilohertz, then the frequency of LR clock also should be at 48 kilohertz. So the data, the clock should be configured based on the sampling rate. So every time the sampling rate changes, the clock also need to be changed or the divider should be modified in such a way that you get a proper left-right clock. So the clock can be generated from the IPS block or it can be generated from the codec side. IPS meaning IPS block in the application process side or it can be generated from the codec side. If the application processor generates the clock and pass it to the codec, then application processor will be the master. Similarly, if the codec generates the clock and gives to the application processor I2S block, then codec will be the master. DMA. Normally three DMA channels are used in mobile SOC. 
so there are one dma channel for transferring the takes primary data and one channel to receive uh, data from the i2s and one more channel is used as a secondary data transmission for the i2s so there will be two i2s controllers one is for primary data transfer and another one is for secondary data transfer i2c interface for codec audio codec chip is controlled through i2c interface because audio codec is sitting outside the so application processor so to control the audio codec we have to send the command through i2c bus so codec driver when we write a driver for the codec we use regmap to control access those register via i2c i2c layers so how audio codec driver communicates to its codec through i2c i2 audio codec driver is a client driver so here you can see the client is that thing but audio codec driver that will communicate to the audio i2c driver and it will send or receive the data through i2c that i2c driver will communicate to the i2c hardware and i2c hardware is nothing but an adapter hardware you can see here in the hardware side that will communicate through i2c bus to the i2c devices here the bottom two i2c devices one could be a or audio coding software architecture of the audio driver here we can see hal is an application layer apart from that remaining are of belong to the kernel side so also library also core are belong to the also framework and the below part is part of the sound card driver so sound card driver inside we have a machine driver i2s driver mixer driver and codec driver sound card driver is act as a glue layer basically it creates a link between the i2s mixer and codec so i2s is directly connected to the application processor a mixer has a multiple interfaces it has the interface from uh application processor or it can, it has an interface from modem it has an interface from bluetooth device so these uh, it takes multiple i2s inputs and it passes on to the different users again it, it will go back to the modem it will go back to uh, the codec and it will go back to the application processor also so these all these links are registered by the sound card driver to the alsa core so alsa core will directly communicate to the sound card driver and from there it will communicate to the respective drivers so sound card driver is the one which actually registers as a all these links and creates a one sound card so based on the sound card driver only the sound card name is registered to the kernel so we have also have the dma driver and the lpas drivers so dma driver is nothing but uh, is linked to the i2s so i2s will bind the dma channels to its i2s streams and lpas is the one actually it is main for low power audio subsystem it will handle the low power different state of the audio low power states so for example when uh, the system wants to go to sleep mode and when it is a uh, non sleep mode how it has to set configure the clocks all are done in the low power audio subsystem driver data flow in audio subsystem so here application is calling pcm write to the alsa layer so alsa layer will copy the data which is passed from the application to the dma buffers so this is a cpu copy so there is a copy happens from uh, application buffer 
to the DMA buffers. From DMA buffer to the I2S lines, the ADMA transfers the data based on the need. So this is how the data from the application reaches to the I2S interface. So once it reaches to the I2S interface, then the data is transferred through I2S lines to the mixer. From mixer, again, it is transferred through I2S lines to the codec. Control flow in audio driver. So here we can see HAL, which is an application layer, which calls ALSA library through system calls. So ALSA library will call the ALSA core and from ALSA core, it will call the sound call driver because sound call driver is registered with the ALSA. So when the sound call driver is called, then it will call the respective IPS mixer and codec based on the functionality. software implementation view of audio driver. So here you can see like each hardware interface is treated as a separate entity. Meaning if there is an interface between the application processor and codec, that is a separate link. And that is called digital audio interface. So the application processor wanted to play some sound, then it will use the die one to transfer the data to the codec. Similarly, when during the call, the communication processor, nothing but modem, will use the link to die to. And similarly, for uh, FM radio, it will use a die three to transfer the data to the codec. So each device has a separate functionality. For example, PCM C0 D0 C or PCM C0 D0P. So C0 is a card and D0 is a device and P for playback and C for capture. So when you say it for the die one, it will be PCM C0 D0. Die two, it will be PCM C0 D1. So like that, it will keep going. So after probe, a separate PCM device is registered for each die link. This is happens in the sound card driver. This slide shows the sequence diagram of playback and capture. So when the application but HAL wants to write playback or record, first it will call PCM open to open the device. So when the device is opened, it will check whether it supports all the parameters or not by calling the info function, then the hardware params. So here the hardware params, it will pass on the parameters like sampling rate, bits per sample, these informations will be passed. Once this information is supported by the sound card driver, then it will give the success. If it is if it is not supported, then it will fail. So the PC open will fail if that particular format is not supported. If the format is supported, then the PCM open will be successful. When the PCM open is success, then the HAL will call for the PCM write or read based on the need basis. So write is nothing but playback and read is nothing but recording, nothing but capture. For the audio playback, HAL will call the PCM write. So when the PCM write is called by the call to the ALSA library, ALSA library will in turn will call the PCM prepare. So PCM prepare will actually prepare the DMA buffers. Once the DMA buffers are prepared, then it will call the write frames. So write frames will be called and the data from the HAL will be written to the DMA buffers. So one, then the DMA buffers will be triggered by the, again, by the ALSA. So the DMA trigger function will get called to the I2S. So I2S, once the trigger is getting called, so DMA will start. So once the DMA start, the data will go from I2S buffer to the, I, DMA buffers to the I2S controller. So once I2S controller receives the data, it will pump out the data through the I2S interface. So this, will be keep 
in the loop until complete buffer is get played back. Sequence capture. So the sequence capture is nothing but recording. So when uh, Hal wants to record the data, it will call the PCM read. So when the PCM read is called, sound card driver will call the start function. So when the start function is get called, so it will start receiving the data from the I2S. So I2S in turn here, when the capture is getting called, the respective mic and other functions will be called in the codec side. The codec will be initialized and it will start transmitting the data through the I2S lines. So once the I2S lines from the codec been transferred, data is getting transferred through I2S lines from codec, it will reach to the I2S controller in the application processor side. So application processor will read the data and it will pump the data to the application. So once the data is all received, then application will end by calling the PCM close. This slide shows the sequence diagram of mixer operation. So application, which is nothing but a HAL, when it calls a mixer open, so ALSA library will open the mixer driver. So it will get all the list of the controls which is uh, provided by the product driver and mixer driver. So it already has all the details of what are the controls are being available. So when the mixer calls a get value of particular control, it will go and read uh, the yes, registers of codec and mixer and provides the required detail back to the application. Similarly, when it wanted to write some controls, it will also go and write a particular settings and it will configure that value. So to see how the mixer works, you can see in the next slide. This slide shows the block diagram of mixer. Mixer is a hardware device mixes the digital audio data from different sources and sends back them based on the selection. So here you can see there is a lot of uh, interfaces here. One is from AP and one is from codec and the one is from modem and another one is Bluetooth. So these TX data are goes to the mixer and get mixed. And these output are given back to the same devices. So mixed output can be given based on the selection. So there are switches available in front of the RX side. So based on the switch selection, it will receive the particular data. So if you see the internal of a mixer, you can see again in, from all the four inputs, these are goes to the adder. So before to the adder, there is a switch. So whichever the source we wanted to add, those only sources will be, will be connected. So these controls are directly controlled by the application. So application can control these switches through the driver. So let's see how it happens. Controls in mixer. Mixer driver exposes some controls to the upper layer through K controls. These controls are used to change the SFR of the mixer, which is done through the regime. So for application, K control, get K control, and it will pass the control num value. So which is the control? KCTL is a, what control it has to make it and control is a value it wanted to proceed. So here in that example, so HAL will call the mixer control get value. If you wanted to get the value, then ISA library, it will reach to the ISA library. ISA library will call the respective control read function. So this will go to the mixer driver. Mixer driver will call the register read. Then it, through, it will have the list. Mixer driver will have the list and it will check whether the particular read function is there or not. If it is a read function is there, it will go and get read from the mixer register and it will get the value. So that will be passed back to the hand layer. DAPM controls. 
So DFPM controls are the controls being provided uh, from the uh, codec and mixer to control various uh, blocks. So for example, when you wanted to play back, uh, you can play back through speaker or headphone or through earpiece. So this path is uh, basically the, how the output has to reach. So this can be enabled separately by enabling the particular device. So speaker on will enable only the speaker function. Headphone on will enable only the headphone function like that. So similarly for in the for the capturing purpose, a mixer mic one can be enabled or mic two can be enabled separately. So apart from this, there are some gain controls. So when you wanted to set the particularly uh, digital gain for DAC or ATC or in the mic you wanted to unlock gain you wanted to increase the gain for mic one or mic two or analog gain for speaker earphone earpiece or headphone can be configured also mixer path can be selected so mic input data mixing can be selected through the adc mixer controls so these are uh, mainly uh, towards the uh, codec side controls So here the use case, we are going to see the one use case of how a mobile uh, uses the audio driver. To check the use case, let's go into the Android audio system. So Android audio system is nothing but how uh, audio framework is there in the Android, which uses the audio kernel. So when you see the topmost layer of an Android is a application layer, where application layer will have multiple applications running. So it can be a phone application or a video player or recorder applications will be running on that. That will in turn will call the application framework. So application framework is nothing but a media player application framework or recorder and audio manager and phone manager. These things will be there in the application framework. So application framework will call the native framework functions, which is nothing but uh, specific to the audio functionalities. So it will have audio track, audio recorder, and audio flinger, audio mixer, and audio policy services. So the audio flinger is one of the main thing, which actually uh, takes, converts all the data to the PCM, and the PCM data is passed uh, to the HAL layer. So the HAL layer, will call the audio hardware interface through and it will have the audio policy manager. So audio hardware interface is nothing but it will, which is actually going to communicate with the kernel. So this will call the kernel functions. So we have already seen how the HAL is communicating with the kernel multiple times. So we will move on to the use case. Here we see the example of voice call path. So when a modem is directing the incoming call, it will inform the application processor. So once the application processor directs that, that means uh, which is uh, Android is running, right? So Android will direct, uh, there is a call, incoming call, then it will initiate uh, to play the play ringtone in the speakers. So through uh, native call will call the playback of audio to speaker. So it will enable the speaker and then it will play the sound through the speaker. So once we receive the sound, then we answer the call. So once the call is answered, the call will be established and uh, the user can communicate to the other user. So when the user speaks, so here before the once the call is answered, the path need to be changed. So path will be changed from application process to the modem side. So previously when application processor was playing the ringtone from application process to the codec. Now the path will change from between modem to codec. So application processor link will be disconnected and directly codec will communicate with the modem. So who are the users, uh, who, what, are, what are things he's speaking, it will go to the codec and it will reach the modem. Similarly, from the other side, whatever things uh, the other user is speaking, that will come through modem and it will go to the speaker or the earpiece. So based upon the connection, if there is a 
earpiece is connected then it will go to the earpiece if he wanted to play in the speaker he can play in speaker or if the user connected to the headphone then it will go to the headphone in case the user is using bluetooth then it, the audio will go to the bluetooth we have reached to the end of this presentation let me summarize what we have seen so far first we saw the audio subsystem in audio subsystem we have ITS block mixer and codec. So ITS block is actually takes the data from the memory and transfers to mixer through ITS interface. From mixer, the data get transferred to the codec. And codec is a playback. It converts digital data to analog and plays in the speaker or headphone based on the configuration. Similarly, for recording, the codec receives the analog data from the mic and transfers to the mixer. From mixer, it goes to the application processor or the modem based on the use case. Next, uh, we saw how the audio software architecture is placed. So we have the hall layer in the top. Basically, that is the application layer. So it start from the kernel side, it start from the ALSA library, then the ALSA core. From that, also code, it comes to the sound card driver. So we have the ITS driver and codec driver and mixer driver. These are clubbed by the sound card driver. The sound card driver links the interfaces provided by each block and it registers the link. So the application can open the device based on the link name and it will based on the use case it will open the each device so the links are created like ap2 codec modem to codec bluetooth to ap or bluetooth to modem so these are the links created and whenever based on the use case these particular links will be open and the audio will be played or recorded This entire presentation is based on a sound card driver used on a mobile device. So this sound card driver may change from device to device. Here we have taken example like I2C is used to control the codec. The different interface can be used to control the codec also in the different devices. And the I2S interface is used to transfer the data from application processor to mixer, mixer to codec. So different interfaces can be used there as well. And the mixer was placed in the application processor. It can be placed in the codec also. So based on the configurations, the driver will change. But what are the links provided to the upper layer? The ALSA will help to use only the link. So up, the upper layer, no need to know what kind of a bottom layer is it. I hope this session helps you to understand the basics of audio driver used in mobile device. So that's all uh, from my side. If you have any questions, please, you can raise them up. And thanks for attending this session. Thank you. Thank you for attending this session.